What if the gut pain and unpredictable flares you live with could be calmed by a single compound shown to reduce inflammation, restore circulation, and help failing cells recover? Welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. Stay informed with quick, easy to listen summaries of our latest articles, perfect for when you're on the go. No reading required. Subscribe for free at Mercola.com for the latest health insights. Hello, and welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. I'm Ethan Foster, and today we're focusing on dimethyl sulfoxide, or DMSO, and what the evidence says about its impact on gastrointestinal disease. I'm Alara Skye. You're hearing about DMSO because inflammatory bowel diseases and related gut disorders keep rising while many people remain trapped in recurring flares, ER visits, and long medication lists. The article we're drawing from reviews data showing DMSO improving irritable bowel syndromes, Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, diverticulitis, leaky gut, and SIBO, along with difficult problems like gastritis, peptic ulcers, cirrhosis, cholecystitis, pancreatitis, peritonitis, amyloidosis, hemorrhoids, and even prostate enlargement. DMSO is described as an umbrella remedy. Rather than targeting one receptor, it addresses common drivers of disease, inflammation, impaired microcirculation, and cell shock. It also enhances absorption and potency of drugs and natural agents, creating combinations that expand what's possible in care. The safety profile is emphasized when used correctly, and the historical record includes thousands of studies across organ systems. Let's begin with the stomach. Reports described chronic gastritis and ulcer patients whose gastric juice volume and acidity normalized after 50% DMSO applications. Bleeding ulcers remain a major burden, yet studies cited show fewer ulcers and complications when DMSO is introduced. In 115 hospitalized patients at risk for stress ulcers, 22% of controls developed ulcers versus 4% on DMSO, with deterioration and emergency surgery occurring only in controls. Another group, 101 patients with blood coughing due to erosive gastritis, had fewer repeat episodes and less hemorrhagic inflammation on oral DMSO compared to controls, with surgery again needed only in the control group. In NSAID-induced erosive gastritis, DMSO reduced rebleeding, stabilized patients, and accelerated healing within 48 hours compared to placebo. The article adds animal data showing protection and faster repair after alcohol, aspirin, chemical, burn, and blood loss injuries. Refractory ulcer cases are highlighted as well. In patients whose gastric or duodenal ulcers did not respond to standard care, oral DMSO reportedly achieved complete healing within four weeks versus placebo. A 1968 patent application is cited describing rapid resolution of acute gastritis, and sustained symptom-free follow-up in most cases. Move down to the intestines, and the pattern continues. In animals subjected to complete intestinal blood flow, cut off for 30 to 60 minutes, giving IV DMSO led to 28 of 29 avoiding gangrene and showed no ischemic damage at 24 hours. Across models, burns, lethal radiation, freezing, sepsis-like states, and peritonitis, DMSO reduced injury and mortality, and improved healing after colonic surgery by 1.4 to 3.9 fold. Human data on duodenal ulcers is notable. In 363 smokers or drinkers with ulcers unhealed after three months, 100% on DMSO recovered, with a 7% relapse over the next year, compared to 60% recovery and 29% relapse on standard therapy alone. A second study in 238 patients reported similar outcomes, and a small series found DMSO prevented recurrences in all five who had repeated duodenal ulcers. Autoimmune gut disease appears responsive as well. A double-blind, randomized trial in 136 patients with recurrent ulcerative colitis found two-week recovery in 84%, using DMSO versus 51% on standard therapy, with one-year relapse at 5% versus 25%. In a mouse model of encapsulating peritoneal sclerosis, DMSO reduced peritoneal thickening and inflammatory markers while increasing anti-inflammatory signals. Amyloidosis is called out because it's hard to treat. The article summarizes cases, some severe and otherwise fatal, 
where gastrointestinal amyloidosis resolved after DMSO. One report described four sequential amyloidosis cases likely triggered by Crohn's disease that improved with oral DMSO. These align with the compound's described anti-inflammatory and tissue-normalizing actions. On hemorrhoids, which are engorged veins, the piece notes repeated clinical improvement with DMSO in varicose conditions and shares reader reports of rapid size reduction with topical application and marked changes after small subcutaneous doses. Patented DMSO preparations for rectal fissures are also mentioned. The liver section is extensive. Dozens of studies are cited where DMSO protected against destructive toxins, including acetaminophen, carbon monoxide, lethal radiation, and bacterial endotoxin, and against ischemia. One study found reduced oxidative stress after partial liver resection. The article also cites evidence that DMSO can induce mesenchymal stem cells to differentiate into liver cells. A small human series is described in which terminal cirrhosis patients who stopped drinking took daily oral DMSO with aloe vera. Among those who completed six months, all had improved clinical status, better lab values, and were alive a year later. Gallbladder data include a surgical series where postoperative wound complications fell to 4%, with 50% DMSO, compared with 14% using 30%, and 24% with traditional care. Reader reports describe acute symptom relief with intravenous DMSO. For gallstones, multiple studies combining DMSO with agents like D-limonene are cited as dissolving stones effectively and without side effects. The pancreas section covers diabetes and pancreatitis. DMSO protected insulin-producing cells from a diabetes-triggering toxin, shielded transplanted cells from immune attack, and promoted bone marrow stem cell differentiation into insulin-secreting cells. It increased insulin secretion in response to glucose and at low doses increased responsiveness to GLP-1 with a pharmaceutical report noting insulin potentiation. Pancreatitis models show prevention when usual triggers are applied, improvements in edema and microcirculation, reductions in immune adhesion molecules, and benefit even in acute hemorrhagic necrotizing pancreatitis. Clinically, a randomized double-blind trial in 78 patients with chronic recurring pancreatitis reported that rectal 10% DMSO brought at least 57% to pain-free at 12 hours versus 17% of controls and 100% pain-free at 24 hours versus 52% on standard care with faster discharges. Additional work combining DMSO with allopurinol reduced pain and inflammatory markers, and a small series in alcohol-induced pancreatitis reported complete pain relief within 12 hours and tenderness resolution by day four. DMSO with fluororacil is also reported to prevent postoperative pancreatitis. Why isn't this standard? The article recounts DMSO's rapid spread in the 1960s, an ensuing FDA crackdown, and later re-entry under DSHEA, yet limited adoption despite extensive literature, international use, and American products incorporating DMSO. The author argues that integrating it would cut disability and deaths in conditions like stroke and spinal injury, and that the same mechanisms explain the gut successes reviewed here. Your takeaway is straightforward. The evidence summarized shows DMSO repeatedly protecting and restoring gastrointestinal tissues under stresses that typically lead to ulcers, perforations, infections, or organ failure. With human data in ulcers, ulcerative colitis, pancreatitis, liver disease, gallbladder problems, hemorrhoids, and amyloidosis. The piece also emphasizes its role as an absorption enhancer and its described safety when used correctly. Here's your challenge. Set aside time today to read the longer article referenced by the author that includes resources and protocols, list the specific gut symptoms you face, and compare them to the conditions and outcomes summarized here so you can decide how you want to pursue this information. Thank you for watching Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. We'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for watching. Subscribe now and click the notification bell so you never miss an update. See you in the next video.